Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Warren Beatty Henry Warren Beatty is an American actor and filmmaker. He has been nominated for 14 Academy Awards 4 for Best Actor, 4 for Best Picture, 2 for Best Director, 3 for Original Screenplay, and 1 for Adapted Screenplay winning Best Director for Reds. Beatty is the only person to have been nominated for acting in, directing, writing, and producing the same film, and he did it twice, first, for Heaven Can Wait, and again for Reds. Eight films he has produced have earned 53 Academy nominations, and in 1999, he was awarded the Academy's highest honor, the Irving G. Thalberg Award. Beatty has been nominated for 18 Golden Globe Awards, winning six, including the Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award, which he was honored with in 2007. Among his Golden Globe nominated films are Splendor in the Grass, his screen debut, and Bonnie and Clyde, Shampoo. Heaven Can Wait, Reds, Dick Tracy, Bugsy, Bullworth and Rules Don't Apply, all of which he also produced. Arthur Penn, who directed Bonnie and Clyde, described Beatty as, the perfect producer, adding, he makes everyone demand the best of themselves. Warren stays with the picture through editing, mixing and scoring. He plain works harder than anyone else I have ever seen. Early Life Henry Warren Beatty was born March 30, 1937, in Richmond, Virginia. His mother, Kathleen Corinne, was a teacher from Nova Scotia. His father, Ira Owens Beatty, had studied for a PhD in educational psychology and worked as a teacher and school administrator, in addition to dealing in real estate. Beatty's grandparents were also teachers. The family was Baptist. In 1945, the family moved from Richmond to Arlington, Virginia. During the 1950s, the family resided in the Dominion Hills section of Arlington. Beatty's elder sister is the actress, dancer, and writer Shirley MacLaine. His uncle, by marriage, was Canadian politician A. A. MacLeod. Beatty became interested in movies before his teens, when he often accompanied his sister to theaters. One film that had an important early influence on him was The Philadelphia Story, which he saw when it was re-released in the 1950s. He noticed a strong resemblance between its star, Catherine Hepburn, and his mother, in both appearance and personality, saying that they symbolized perpetual integrity. Another film that had an impact on him was Love Affair, which starred one of his favorite actors, Charles Boyer. He found it deeply moving, and recalls that, this is a movie I always wanted to make. He did remake Love Affair in 1994, in which he starred alongside Annette Bening and Catherine Hepburn. Among his favorite TV shows in the 1950s was the Texaco Star Theater, and he began to mimic one of its regular host comedians, Milton Berle. Beatty learned to do a superb imitation of Berle and his routine, said a friend, and he often used Berle-type humor at home. His sister Shirley MacLaine's lasting memories of her brother include seeing him reading books by Eugene O'Neill or singing along to Al Jolson records. In Rules Don't Apply, Beatty plays Howard Hughes, who is shown talking about him singing Jolson songs while flying his plane. McLean noted, on what made her brother want to become a filmmaker, sometimes writing, producing, directing and starring in his films. That's why he's more comfortable behind the camera, she says. He's in the total control aspect. He has to have control over everything. Beatty doesn't deny that need. In speaking about his earliest parts, he said, when I acted in films I used to come, with suggestions about the script, the lighting, the wardrobe, and people used to say what I want, to produce the picture as well. And I used, to say that I supposed I did. Education Beatty was a star football player at Washington Lee High School in Arlington. Encouraged to act by the success of his sister, who had recently established herself as a Hollywood star. He decided to work as a stagehand at the National Theatre in Washington, D.C. during the summer before his senior year. After graduation, he was reportedly offered 10 football scholarships to college, but turned them down, to study liberal arts at Northwestern University, where he joined the Sigma Chi fraternity. After his first year, he left college to move to New York City, where he studied acting under Stella Adler at the Stella Adler Studio of Acting. Military Service 
Beatty enlisted in the California Air National Guard on February 11, 1960 under his original name, Henry W. Beatty. On January 1, 1961, Beatty was discharged from the Air National Guard due to a physical disability. He was simultaneously discharged from the United States Air Force Reserve and served on inactive duty only. 1950s and 1960s Beatty started his career making appearances on television shows such as Studio One, Craft Television Theater, and Playhouse 90. He was a semi-regular on The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis during its first season. His performance in William Inge's A Loss of Roses on Broadway garnered him a 1960 Tony Award nomination for Best Featured Actor in a Play, and a 1960 Theatre World Award. It was his sole appearance on Broadway. He made his film debut in Alia Kazan's Splendor in the Grass, opposite Natalie Wood. The film was a critical and box office success and Beatty was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor, and received the award for New Star of the Year Actor. The film was also nominated for two Oscars, winning one. Author Peter Biskind points out that Kazan was the first in a string of major directors Beatty sought out, mentors or father figures, from whom he wanted to learn. Beatty, years later during a Kennedy Center tribute to Kazan, told the audience that Kazan had given him the most important break in his career. Biskind adds that they were wildly dissimilar. Mental versus protege, director versus actor, immigrant outsider versus native son. Kazan was armed with the confidence born of age and success, while Beatty was virtually aflame with the arrogance of youth. Kazan recalls his impressions of Beatty. He followed his initial film with Tennessee Williams' The Roman Spring of Mrs. Stone, with Vivian Lee and Lotta Lenya, directed by Jose Quintero. All Fall Down, with Angela Lansbury, Carl Malden, and Eva Marie Saint, directed by John Frankenheimer. Lilith, with Gene Seberg and Peter Fonda, directed by Robert Rosen. Promise Her Anything, with Leslie Caron, Bob Cummings, and Keenan Wynn, directed by Arthur Hiller. Mickey One, with Alexandra Stewart and Herd Hatfield, directed by Arthur Pennsylvania and Kaleidoscope, with Susanna York and Clive Reville, directed by Jack Smite. In 1965, he formed a production company, Tatara, which he named it for Kathleen and Ira. At age 29, Beatty produced and acted in Bonnie and Clyde, which would be released in 1967. He assembled a team that included the writers Robert Benton and David Newman, and the director, Arthur Pennsylvania. Beatty selected most of the cast, including a Faye Dunaway, Gene Hackman, Estelle Parsons, Gene Wilder and Michael J. Pollard. Beatty also oversaw the script and spearheaded the delivery of the film. Gene Hackman was chosen, because Beatty had acted with him in Lilith in 1964 and felt he was a great actor. Upon completion of the film, he credited Hackman with giving the most authentic performance in the movie, so textured and so moving, recalls Dunaway. He was impressed with Gene Wilder after seeing him in a play and didn't even need him to audition, in what became Vilda's screen debut. And Beatty had already known Pollard. Michael J. Pollard was one of my oldest friends, Beatty said. I'd known him forever. I met him the day I got my first television show. We did a play together on Broadway. Bonnie and Clyde went on to be a critical and commercial success, despite the early misgivings by studio head Jack Warner, who put up the production money. Before filming began, Warner had asked an associate, what does Warren Beatty think he's doing? How did he ever get us into this thing? This gangster stuff went out with Cagney. The film was nominated for 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor, and seven Golden Globe Awards including Best Picture and Best Actor. 1970s and 1980s After Bonnie and Clyde, Beatty acted with Elizabeth Taylor in The Only Game in Town, directed by George Stevens. McCabe and Mrs. Miller, directed by Robert Altman. Dollars, directed by Richard Brooks. The Parallax View, directed by Alan Pakula. And The Fortune, directed by Mike Nichols. Beatty produced co-wrote and acted in Shampoo, directed by Hal Ashby, which was nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Original Screenplay, as well as five Golden Globe Awards, including Best Motion Picture and Best Actor. In 1978, Beatty directed, produced, wrote and acted in Heaven Can Wait. The film was nominated for nine Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Director, Actor, and Adapted Screenplay. 
It also won three Golden Globe Awards, including Best Motion Picture and Best Actor. Beatty's next film was Reds, a historical epic about American communist journalist John Red who observed the Russian October Revolution a project Beatty had begun researching and filming for as far back as 1970. It was a critical and commercial success, despite being an American film about an American communist made and released at the height of the Cold War. It received 12 Academy Award nominations including four for Beatty, winning three. Beatty won for Best Director, Maureen Stapleton won for Best Supporting Actress, and Vittorio Storaro won for Best Cinematography. The film received seven Golden Globe nominations, including Best Motion Picture, Director, Actor, and Screenplay. Beatty won the Golden Globe Award for Best Director. Following Reds, Beatty did not appear in a film for five years until 1987's Ishtar, written and directed by Elaine May. Following severe criticism in press reviews by the new British studio chief David Putnam just prior to its release, the film received mixed reviews and was unimpressive commercially. Putnam attacked several other over-budget US films greenlit by his predecessor and was fired shortly thereafter. 1990s and 2000s under his second production company, Mulholland Productions, Beatty next produced, directed, and played the title role as comic strip-based detective Dick Tracy in the 1990 film of the same name. The film received positive reviews, and was one of the highest-grossing films of the year. It received seven Academy Award nominations, winning three for Best Art Direction, Best Makeup, and Best Original Song. It also received four Golden Globe Award nominations, including Best Motion Picture. In 1991, he produced and starred as the real-life gangster Bugsy Siegel in the critically and commercially acclaimed Bugsy, directed by Barry Levinson, which was nominated for ten Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor. It later won two of the awards for Best Art Direction and Best Costume Design. The film also received eight Golden Globe Award nominations, including Best Motion Picture and Best Actor, winning for Best Motion Picture. Beatty's next film, Love Affair, directed by Glenn Gordon Caron, received mixed reviews and was unimpressive commercially. In 1998, he wrote, produced, directed and starred in the political satire Bullworth, which was critically acclaimed and was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. The film also received three Golden Globe Award nominations, for Best Motion Picture, Best Actor, and Best Screenplay. Beatty has appeared briefly in numerous documentaries, including Madonna, Truth or Dare, and One Bright Shining Moment, The Forgotten Summer of George McGovern. Following the poor box office performance of Town and Country, in which Beatty starred, he did not appear in or direct another film for 15 years. In May 2005, Beatty sued Tribune Media, claiming he still maintained the rights to Dick Tracy. On March 25, 2011, U.S. District Judge Dean Preggerson ruled in Beatty's favor. 2010s In 2010, Beatty directed and reprised his role as Dick Tracy in a 30-minute comedy film titled Dick Tracy Special, which premiered on TV. The short metafiction film stars Dick Tracy and film critic and historian Leonard Maltin, the latter of whom discusses the history and creation of Tracy. Tracy talks about how he admired Ralph Bird and Morgan Conway who portrayed him in several films, but says he didn't care much for Beatty's portrayal of him or his film. At CinemaCon in April 2016, Beatty said he intends to make a Dick Tracy sequel. Rules Don't Apply is a fictionalized true-life romantic comedy about Howard Hughes, set in 1958 Hollywood and Las Vegas. It stars Beatty, who wrote, co-produced and directed the film. It co-stars Alden Ehrenreich and Lily Collins, with supporting actors including Annette Bening, Alec Baldwin, Matthew Broderick, Candace Bergen, Ed Harris, and Martin Sheen. Some have said that Beatty's film is 40 years in the making. In the mid-1970s, Beatty signed a contract with Warner Brothers to star in, produce, write, and possibly direct a film about Howard Hughes. The project was put on hold when Beatty began Heaven Can Wait. Initially, Beatty planned to film the life story of John Red and Hughes back to back, but as he was getting deeper into the project, he eventually focused primarily on the Reed film Reds. In June 2011, 
it was reported that Beatty would produce, write, direct, and star in a film about Hughes, focusing on an affair he had with a younger woman in the final years of his life. During this period, Beatty interviewed actors to star in his ensemble cast. He met with Andrew Garfield, Alec Baldwin, Owen Wilson, Justin Timberlake, Shia LaBeouf, Jack Nicholson, Evan Rachel Wood, Rooney Mara, and Felicity Jones. It was released on November 23, 2016, and was Beatty's first film in 15 years. Rotten Tomatoes, top critics, gave the film a 63% fresh rating, with one review calling it hugely entertaining. Another review said that the wait was worth it. The film was also a commercial disappointment. In 2017, Beatty reunited with his Bonnie and Clyde co-star Faye Dunaway at the 89th Academy Awards in celebration of the film's 50th anniversary. After being introduced by Jimmy Kimmel, they were given a standing ovation as they walked out onto the stage to present the Best Picture Award. They were given the wrong envelope, and Dunaway incorrectly announced La La Land as Best Picture, instead of the actual winner, Moonlight. This became a social media sensation, trending all over the world. Personal Life In 1959, Beatty began dating actress Joan Collins, they were engaged in the early 1960s, but his infidelity led to their split. Collins revealed in her 1978 autobiography that she became pregnant by Beatty, but had an abortion. Beatty has been married to actress Annette Benning since 1992. They have four children, Stephen Ira, Benjamin, Isabel, and Ella. His eldest son Stephen Ira came out as transgender in 2006. Prior to marrying Benning, Beatty was well known for his womanizing and high-profile romantic relationships that received generous media coverage. Singer-songwriter Carly Simon also dated Beatty, and confirmed in November 2015 that she wrote a verse in her hit song, You're So Vain, about him. Beatty is a longtime supporter of the Democratic Party. In 1972, Beatty was part of the inner circle of Senator George McGovern's presidential campaign. He traveled extensively and was instrumental in organizing fundraising. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?